Leonard Madu, and he's talking about uh, the African world and the uh, scattering of Africans all over the world and some of the consequences of uh, that scattering that has an impact upon their social, economic, and political situation. And of course, Dr. Madu, let's uh, continue our, mm -hmm. our conversation. Yeah, uh, like I was saying, uh, the common denominator you know, of these uh, Africans in diaspora, wherever they are, mm -hmm. you know, is that they are discriminated against. Mm -hmm. They are always at the bottom of the ladder, mm -hmm. politically, economically, mm -hmm. you know, and socially. Mm -hmm. So that's very important uh, mm -hmm. to know. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even when they are in the majority, mm -hmm. they're still, you know, at the political and mm -hmm. the low level of the program social ladder. Mm -hmm. For example, in Jamaica, okay. blacks are majority, predominate, mm -hmm. you know. 1% is about white, mm -hmm. but they control the entire economy mm -hmm. and even the political system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the blacks vote, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh -huh. but the whites control the government. Uh -huh. Yeah, so what happened when uh, Mr. Michael Manley, mm -hmm. you know, who was a uh, mulatto, after he left the, the prime ministership, mm -hmm. and a black guy was to succeed him, Mr. Patterson, mm -hmm. and they were asking, is he equal to the job mm -hmm. or equal to the task? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> because of his skin, skin color. color. Exactly, mm -hmm. because of his skin color. Mm -hmm. In Guyana, the same thing. You know, after independence, the, the British, you know, handed over to a guy called Chedi Jagan, mm -hmm. you know, who was Indo Guyanese mm -hmm. from Indian stock. And the Indo Guyanese has always discriminated against the Afro Guyanese. Okay, okay. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what happened. Then there were some riots and disturbances. Mm -hmm. Then when a black man called for Buzz Bonham took mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. he started trying to entrench, you know, mm -hmm. black power mm -hmm. and black rule, mm -hmm. you know, as an antidote to discrimination. Okay. Mm -hmm. But still, the economy is controlled by the indo Guyanese, mm -hmm. you know, and the, and the white folks who live in Guyana, mm -hmm. you know, to the exclusion of, the, of, of, of blacks with predominating population. Mm -hmm. In Suriname, almost two, de two decades ago, really, uh, the, the, a guy called uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bautuse, mm -hmm. uh, he was, uh, he took over the government by force, you know, who was running a military government. Mm -hmm. uh, he started carrying out some kind of genocide against the blacks who live in the country, in, in, in Suriname. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's the same thing in most, you know, Latin American countries. Mm -hmm. Af Africans, you know, do the menial jobs, you know, lack the education, okay. you know, and excluded from, from really anything other than cultural activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even, even, even the, 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 the uh, carnival. Okay. Yeah, even the carnival. You know, for a long time it was banned officially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blacks have to hide to do the carnival. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when they saw that the carnival was of economic value. Value, good. Yeah, it brought in a lot of money, a lot mm -hmm. of tourists and all mm -hmm. this. Yeah, a lot of those countries legalized it, mm -hmm. you know, like in Cuba, mm -hmm. in, in, in Bahamas, in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. in Brazil. Mm -hmm. You know, it's official now because of, of the, the economic impact. <laughs> exactly, because uh -huh. of the mm -hmm. economic impact that you brought. Mm -hmm. And you know, those carnivals started as a cultural, mm -hmm. you know, activity mm -hmm. of Africans. And, they, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and yeah. the idea was to try to suppress that uh, exactly. cultural activity. Ab absolutely. Uh, black pride, as absolutely. it might be called. Absolutely, mm -hmm. the uh -huh. idea was to suppress it. Uh -huh. But when they saw that there they was some make economic <laughs> value <laughs> uh -huh. to having mm -hmm. that festival, mm -hmm. then they, you know, made it official. I mean, mm -hmm. you can imagine how many millions the Brazilian government makes, you mm -hmm. know, or, you know, during that festival okay. in Rio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Bahamas and Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. and all that, yeah. So it became, because of the monetary value, you know, some to them. Mm -hmm. The same word they call the Kandombe dance, mm -hmm. you know, part of voodoo, this mm -hmm. and, yeah. The government didn't like it, but when they saw that, you know, mm -hmm. it's of economic value, people come just to watch it okay. from uh, some places. Mm -hmm. They said, no problem, mm -hmm. we we'll make it official, you know. So these are some of, some of the, you know, types of ways, you know, try to suppress mm -hmm. in African culture in, in some of these places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but the good news is that in some of these countries, you know, African culture thrives, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in Brazil, for example, you know, on the northeast coast, where Africans predominate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people still speak some variation of African language, okay. see wear African clothes, mm -hmm. you know, eat African food, and all that, the buildings are similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's hope in some of those places. Mm -hmm. But the, the main problem 
is that is that of what I call political sensitivity. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot a lot of the black population they have not been highly political sensitized. Okay. That is their right mm -hmm. to demand changes. Even though they might be in the majority. They, exactly. They, 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 yeah. uh -huh. exactly. Even though they're in the majority, they've not been political sensitized. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, we in mm -hmm. this country got sensitized, mm -hmm. you know, to our rights. Say, hey, you know, no, we, I need to, we can go to the same schools, we mm -hmm. pay the same taxation and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah, most of the blacks in the diaspora have not been so politically sensitized. Mm -hmm. And because they lack the political muscle, or even the re financial resources mm -hmm. to do anything, mm -hmm. you know, because the government in most of those societies control the economy. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not like our economy that's almost in private hands. Mm -hmm. You know, big corporations can donate to any agitator they want, you know, mm -hmm. the support here. Uh, but in those countries, the government controls the resources. Everything okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to be effective as an agitator, one way or the other, you have to knuckle a little bit to the government. Okay. Yeah, if you're a newspaper publisher, Okay, say, so, well, hey, you have to start agitating. The government can cut off the print. Okay. You won't get no print mm -hmm. for your paper. If you're a TV station, they can shut it down, mm -hmm. you know, without yeah. going through any legal mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it makes it difficult for people who really want to oppose the government mm -hmm. to do it, you know, ferociously and, uh -huh. and with zeal. And, 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 mm -hmm. and be successful in doing so. That's correct. See, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without thinking of the financial and other consequences uh -huh. okay. of it. All jobs come from the government. All right. Okay. They might retaliate, say, well, all your family will throw them away from jobs. Uh -huh. So that might serve as a deterrent mm -hmm. against people who want to oppose the government. Okay. Uh -huh. see, so we were more successful here because we had the resources. Okay. You know, there were, you know, well, well meaning <laughs> corporations and business people who saw that, you know, it's in their interest uh -huh. for, for African Americans to have their rights. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's, it's a good business you know, idea for there to be peace and stability so they can benefit. And you can see the corporations played a vital role mm -hmm. here in the changes. Nobody mm -hmm. can deny that. Okay. A lot of the funding to LCLC and all this mm -hmm. came from corporations. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that, so it, it enabled them to have the resources to fight. Mm -hmm. In these other countries, they don't have those resources, mm -hmm. you know, available to fight the mm -hmm. government because mm -hmm. government controls almost 90% mm -hmm. of the resources mm -hmm. because the economies are mixed okay. in a way what you call mixed economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now, it seems to me that this is a terrible waste of human resources, uh, Dr. Madhu, is it not? I mean, you've, got, you, you've excluded uh, millions and uh, half millions of people in various countries from participating in the social, economic, and political development of a country. Is that not mm -hmm. uh, a terrible waste of resources, uh, human resources? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, in, in, in South America alone, you have about between 150 to 200 million, you know, Africans mm -hmm. who live, who live, like I said before, Brazil alone has about 90 million, mm -hmm. you know. So this is a huge, mm -hmm. you know, waste of human resources mm -hmm. that needs to be tapped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the only way I think, you know, changes okay. can come quicker, you know, is if the government A becomes more democratize okay. not just political democracy mm -hmm. you know voting is one thing mm -hmm. controlling the means of production and resources okay another. very good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's one way the africans in diaspora can prosper mm -hmm. when when they start sharing in the economy mm -hmm. of those countries where they live control mm -hmm. the resources mm -hmm. or be part of you know the group that controls the resources mm -hmm. then they could be able to fight for their mm -hmm. rights effectively Mm -hmm. And so you think that uh, Africans in, in the United States have had a, 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 a tremendous opportunity over some of the others, primarily because of uh, their ability to agitate and to pol uh, uh, become politically sensitive to mm -hmm. all of these things. Is that, is that what we're saying? Uh, uh, absolutely. And because of, you know, because of education, mm -hmm. you know, because of education and resources. Okay. You mm -hmm. know, in most of these other countries, mm -hmm. most of the Africans are not educated at okay. all, almost mm -hmm. three quarters of them. So you don't have that powerful middle class mm -hmm. that we had in this country to lead any kind of, uh, you know, revolt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most of the time, well, most revolutions are, re are led by the middle class. Okay. Uh -huh. They're led by the middle uh -huh. class. And, uh -huh. and, and, and really, for all practical purposes, there are no black middle classes as such in, in, in many of these countries. Mm -hmm. no, absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. In most of these countries, you don't have what uh -huh. you call really a strong black middle uh -huh. class. And, of course, Dr. Madhu, we're uh, ending this... Uh, show for today and uh, I just want to thank you for bringing up for reminding us because I think that uh, so many of us uh, 
simply see the Africans in America, in the United States, and we think that that is a condition of Africans everywhere, if, if we are aware that there are other Africans mm -hmm. everywhere. And I think that this show will to go quite a way in, in, in determining uh, where Africans are. And of course, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.